Okay, I'm gonna be honest with all of you. I really don't like covering the same person in like a time span that's very close to each other. It just feels weird. It almost feels like obsessive, you know? Like if I cover this person a few days ago and then I cover them again a few days later, it kind of comes off as kind of, I understand why people could view it as kind of obsessive, but unfortunately Blair White specifically has done two things that are worth making a video on in a very short period of time. My last video I did on her was five days ago. Um, ow, wow, that actually did pretty well. Damn, okay. Um, Blair White says she's not a real woman in her new Super Straight video. It did pretty good. Um, obviously, the Super Straight thing was, was a thing, and she said some dumb shit in her Super Straight video. And uh, then she, for some goddamn reason, went onto this fucking podcast. And I watched a clip of it the other day, and I know... Every other lefty streamer has already talked about this. I know. Bosch has talked about it. Demon Mama's talked about it. Destiny's probably talked about it. I'm pretty sure every other lefty streamer or politi like progressive political streamer has already talked about this. I don't care. Because there's a possibility, a very small possibility, that there are like five people out there that only watch me for political content. And those are the people this is for, okay? So uh, this panel, this debate panel that we're watching is hosted by, and I kid you not, the channel name is Slightly Offensive. I don't even know how you would pronounce that with the star, the, the you know, little censorship there. Ironic that conservatives claim to be against censorship, yet they self-censor. Um, no, okay, this might be... The LARPiest thing I've ever seen, where your conservative victim complex is so extreme that you censor your own name. Can you, can these people get over themselves, please? For the love of God, this is, I want to gouge my eyes out with a fucking toothpick. This makes me cringe, okay? All right. Um, now, to give you an idea of, and, and I want to make this very clear, okay, because we're going to read the comments in a little bit. This is 51 minutes long. We're not watching the whole thing. However, we are going to watch a few highlights of it, and then we're going to look at the comments, because the comments highlight the main point of this video, the main point of this segment, the entire segment, this whole thing, okay? So let's take a look, all right? Let's go ahead and read the, um, the, the description of this stream. Okay, of, of this video, this debate. These people agree that the radical left is out of control, but how to defeat them is a different story. We ask the question, how do we overcome the woke cancel culture left that has spread through our society like cancer? Smooth. Do we return to traditional conservative Christian values or create a bigger tent, secular party that turns a blind eye to degeneracy and immorality? Whew. Wow. Well, that's uh, definitely something. And obviously, if you look at the like-to-dislike ratio, overwhelming support on this, by the way. And this is a extremely conservative channel, okay? I don't know much about this guy, but, like, considering turns a blind eye to degeneracy and immorality being in, like, the description and them having Blair White on here and it being Christian conservatives battle pro-LGBT Republicans, based on the context that I'm picking up here, I'm assuming... When they say degeneracy and immorality, they're talking about LGBT people, okay? And we're not going to read the comments yet, because the comments perfectly outline my entire argument, the entire reason I'm making this, okay? So let's go ahead and check this out. But first, oh wow, I'm covering up John Doyle's face here. I don't know if that's like a bad thing, but um, I'm going to go ahead and shrink myself a little, make myself small. I'm just a small boy among these colossal titans. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the roster of um, uh, of Smash Fighters we have here. We have the epitome of the Karen. When I imagine a Karen, this is the image that pops up in my head. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, this is K uh, uh, Karen Borisenko, Caitlin Borisenko, Car Carolyn Borisenko, um, who has, ironically, she might be the epitome of of the SJW look. Like, 2016 me, if I thought of an SJW, 
this is the image that would have popped in my head, okay? It's actually wild that she's a conservative and yet has, like, the, the most iconic SJW aesthetic I've ever seen in my life, okay? Um, then we have blonde conservative woman number 487. I'm pretty sure they're cloning these people. Am I the only one that thinks that, like, somewhere out in America, in the middle of the desert or something, there's, like, a secret facility where they're, like, cloning and genetically engineering blonde conservative women that look exactly like her? There's too many of them. I, I swear to God, there's so many of them. They all look the same. Ann Coulter, Lauren Southern, I, I could literally, I, I, Tommy Lauren, there's so many, there's so many. Lonnie does not look like that. Although, she is going to get the trad wife haircut, okay? We'll talk about that later, okay? Um, then we have John Doyle here, who is a uh, fascist twink, who appears to be in a room where the window has been covered with some kind of fiberglass. Is he being held in a basement right now? I think John Doyle was mistaken for a child on the road, and a child molester kidnapped him and locked him in his basement because the window has, like, some kind of, like, a sheet of fiberglass insulation over it. The walls are, like, not painted. This wall that's, like, kind of painted has, like, the, the paint chipping off of it. I think he's currently being held captive, okay? I, I don't know if that's what's happening there. Though I have to admit, if uh, John Doyle finally, like, you know, went on a bit of a soul-searching journey and realized that he's, you know, truly gay, I feel like he would give a killer blowjob, right? Look at this guy's lips. I, listen, I've got thin lips, all right? He's got some thick, voluptuous lips. I feel like his lips could probably form an airtight seal around a dick, okay? That's all I'm saying, okay? It's, I'm, I'm just saying. It's, it's, a, it's an observation that I've made, okay? And, of course, we have the Queen of Pygmies, Blair White, okay? Now, the whole idea of this debate panel that we're about to watch a small amount of, because 51 minutes, we're not watching the whole thing, um, the idea is you have uh, Christian conservatives, by that I mean fascists. John Doyle and this woman are fascists. And then you have pro-LGBT conservatives. By that I mean conservatives who are willing to allow LGBT people into their movement as long as they allow them, give them some utility to spread their ideas more, right? You're, you know, they allow people like Milo Yiannopoulos, people like Blair White and so on, right? Um, so Karen uh, and uh, Blair White are on the side of like the pro-LGBT pro side, right? I actually don't know if Carolyn is um, homophobic. I mean, I know she's like a Trump supporter and like a conservative, but I don't actually know if she's like vehemently against LGBT people. I, I, like, I know she's not as bad as these two, but I actually don't know, like, where she is on that. I would guess she's probably fairly okay with gay people. I, I think most of her issues are, like, she hates poor people. I know she hates poor people. I don't know if she hates LGBT people, right? Probably some, like, lib-centrist position, right? Um, we all know Blair White's position on trans people, gay people, and so on. And uh, these people... They're going to be the main, uh, the main like, uh, topic of this. And then, of course, I never thought I'd say, say this, but, like, we're going to feel bad for Blair White here, okay? I'm not kidding. Is Carolyn a lefty? No, she's a conservative, but she claims, she's, like, one of those hashtag walk away. She used to be a, cons uh, a lefty, but now she's a conservative type person because apparently she had, like, if I remember correctly, her origin story, her MCU... Uh, origin story was she was in a knit a Facebook group about knitting, and then people in her knitting Facebook group really hated Trump supporters. But then she went to a Trump rally, and Trump supporters were nice to her, so she changed all of her political opinions. Um, yeah, that was basically yeah knitting got too political for her, so that's her origin story, right? Um, but yeah, th this is all going to be about feeling bad for Blair. A little bit. We're also going to shit on Blair because, you know, she's a terrible person. But um, we're going to feel bad for her nonetheless because she subjects herself and cucks herself to an unbelievable amount of transphobia in this. It's actually insane. 
Like, she just lays down and fucking takes it for the most part. It's, it's insane. I watched a clip of it on, um, on stream the other day because someone sent it to me, and it made me really mad. Um, but I sort of thought about it for a while, and I decided I wanted to do a segment on it. Because originally I just reacted to the clip, and I didn't do a segment. But we're going to go ahead and watch this. Let's, uh, let's see. We got some good content here. Let's watch. Dr. Carl here was the first one to celebrate me being Carlin. Carlin. Um, well, also, I celebrated that you were banned on Twitter I, I because say, you repeatedly I, tweeted I that my husband should be deported, Lauren. He's no, a legal alien. alien. I don't really know how much you know about me, but I'm probably the most vocal anti-children transitioning person on the internet. It's oh, I know. I, it's well, I, I let, I let you speak. The best thing you can do for us is I, grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you. I want all of you to know Blair basically lays back and just takes that shit, dude. She basically just lays back and takes that abuse. If I was on there, I'd be white knighting Blair. Okay? I'm not gonna lie, alright? I need to make this very clear, okay? And I've noticed, I've, it's not common. It's very much not common, okay? I've seen it like once or twice, but the, it doesn't mean I haven't seen it. Transphobia Racism, sexism, homophobia, all of these things is never okay, no matter who it's being directed to. Blair White is awful. Doesn't mean transphobia against her is okay, because when you're transphobic to one trans person or racist to one person of color, no matter how terrible they are as a person, you are still direct, you are still being racist or you're still being transphobic. It doesn't matter. Every person in that group is affected by that, right? Um, just like, I don't know, let's say there was a black person who, who was like a, a, a serial killer pedophile. It would not be okay to call that black serial killer pedophile the N-word. No matter how bad of a person they are, it just wouldn't be okay. So yeah, if I was on here, I'd obviously be white knighting Blair um, because... Just arguing against the transphobia. Actually, no. I think it would probably be goading Blair White to defend herself more strongly. Though I don't think she's capable of doing that because of how cucked she is to conservatism. But let's go ahead and watch. Conservative TMZ. <laughs> That's actually a good name. There's been a lot of arguments on Twitter recently where people cannot decide what it means to be right wing or what the future of the party is. If you don't know why that's important, well, just look around you at the radical leftism, all the insanity in the culture, and a president who borrowed an election, and a country who wonders, what is our future, and who is going to save well, For starters, radical leftism is not popular in America, okay? Not even fucking close, all right? Anybody who says that radical leftism is getting popular in America, or even alludes to the idea that the Democratic Party or Biden are leftist, you can just immediately... Just throw away everything they say. They have no fucking clue what they're talking about. They are not even past politics. Like, they are not even past, like, a pixel of understanding politics, okay? If politics was a 1080p monitor, their understanding of politics would be less than a single pixel, okay? Um, uh, 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 also, what the fuck does borrowed an election mean? Wait, no, no, wait. I think he means stole the election, but these people have such a huge victim complex, they think that YouTube will ban them if they say that Biden stole it. And honestly, YouTube might actually do that. It's just dog whistling, right? You know how, like, conservative YouTube channels, they'll say the beer bug instead of the coronavirus? Or they'll, like, they'll, they'll kind of, like, they're so afraid of saying what their actual opinions are because they know how horrible that they are, they are that they can only dog whistle, right? So they say, borrowed the election instead of saying what they really believe, stole the election, or um, beer bug instead of coronavirus. Or I think I, I actually heard a conservative YouTuber the other day, and I kid you fucking not, say the Ching Chong flu. Oh, and conservatives will do this with the word Nazi as well. They'll do this with the word Nazi too. You guys want to know how I, like how much I don't, like I will sacrifice profit if it means that I'm like honest about what I believe or what I want to say. I won't censor myself if it means that I make a little bit less money. I'll put the word Nazi in my titles, okay? That is how much I don't give a fuck about like, sacrificing what I want to say 
if it means that I make, or, or sorry, sacrificing a bit of profit if it means I say what I believe, okay? If I think someone's a Nazi, I will call them a Nazi, and I'll say it in the fucking title. I'll say it in the title. I don't care. I'm not going to do the whole, like, I'm not, I'm not going to do the whole, like, hmm, uh, German uh, bad guy thing, like some weird dog whistly shit to preserve my monetization, like, Fuck off. I'm not doing that shit. I'm not a fucking pussy. Listen, I need money to survive. I'm not giving up my principles in exchange for, like, a few extra dollars per video, okay? Not happening. Us. Conservatives, on the other hand, they're all in it for the money. From this absolute madness. Well, a lot of people seem to disagree, which is why I brought a panel of guests on to talk about what the future of the right wing looks like and how we win back our country. We can bring them on the screen. Uh, I went ahead and I invited on... A myriad of people. I have uh, Carlin, Bor he's called Carlin Borisenko. Well yeah, done. Awesome. Commentator. We also have uh, Lauren Witzke. Uh, she ran for uh, uh, Congress in. I I'm not surprised her name's Lauren. I'm going to be honest. They, they all have like some name that kind of is a spinoff of Laura or Lauren. I think, I I I'm telling you, these are clones. These are clones. There is a facility in the desert where they are producing these people. They are not real people. This woman, she doesn't have fingerprints. If you, like, took a magnifying glass to her finger, there are no, there are no, finger, there are no fingerprints, okay? She doesn't have a social security number. There is no, she has no birth certificate. She, is a, she was created in a test tube. She's a clone. They're making these blonde conservative women somewhere. I don't know where, but we're going to figure it out, okay? This is my new lefty conspiracy theory I'm starting, okay? That there is some place out in the desert where blonde conservative women are being created, okay? If it, if it isn't in the desert, it's in Connecticut? Yeah, maybe. I think, it's the, I think it's Area 51, personally. In Delaware. We also have Blair White, YouTuber as well, and John Doyle, YouTuber, and they're all here to answer these questions. So let's uh, talk a little bit about this as we get into this. Starting with Lauren, um, how do you describe yourself politically? Okay, so I am socially conservative. I'm advocately, I've always been economically populist. Uh, economic populism is the future of our party. However, preserving- Economic populism is extremely fucking dumb, okay? The idea, one of the biggest like tenets of, popul of economic populism is protectionism. Protectionism, like full on protectionism, the type that like people like this would implement, would destroy our fucking country. I'm not even kidding, okay? We rely, there's no going back to like, American-made uh, industry, okay? It's just not happening, okay? We had a big old boom. I, I don't want to go on a rant that's so irrelevant to the main topic of this, but I do feel like this is important to say because it's educational um, for my audience, but we are not going back to the good old American-made everything days, okay? It's not happening, all right? America had a big boost in home manufacturing after World War II because Europe got bombed to shit by the Nazis, so we got a big boost when it came to production. The rest of the world's caught up. China is able to produce things a lot cheaper. You know the reason? Hey, guess what? Hypers in chat if you are poor. Hypers in chat if you are, like, legitimately poor, like, below the poverty line. Or pretty close to it. There's a few poor people in here. Uh, economic globalism and us buying products from China is the reason why poor people can afford smartphones, all right? Don't get me wrong, buying a smartphone, depending on your circumstance, probably isn't the smartest financial decision, though a smartphone can help you get a job, can help you communicate and network to get to a point where you're doing better. Don't get me wrong, it's not, haha, if you're poor, just don't buy a phone forehead, right? Obviously, you also need entertainment and, you know, your certain creature comforts in order to have a happy life, even if you are poor. But regardless... Economic globalization is the reason why so many of these products are cheap enough in America that poor people can still, like, buy them. If iPhones or Androids were developed here in America, if they're manufactured here in America, they would be way more expensive. You think iPhones are expensive now? Imagine if they, if they weren't being made for a few dollars each, okay? I'm pretty sure, like, one iPhone X probably costs, like, 10 bucks to make, maybe even less. Like, they aren't made with very expensive materials. It's aluminum and glass. And, like, obviously there's a little bit of gold in the chips and you know, other parts, right? But it's, like, overall probably, like, less than $10 to, to make an iPhone, right? 
Now, imagine if instead, here in America, where instead of people being, they aren't that cheap. Nah, they're, they're, how, hold on. I'm actually, never mind. I, I'm not actually that. But the point is, any ec economist, and I know lefties hate economists, but like any economist will agree that like, if we made all of these products, or even the majority of these products here in America, they would be unaffordable for most Americans, okay? Why are leftists so ugly and weak? Hey, North, join my fan discord. We can debate about it, okay? I imagine you have some political disagreements with me. Just join the discord and we can debate. What do you say? You man enough? There's a link in my, in my YouTube description. You can join my discord, join the Q chat, and we can debate after this. Come on, destroy the libcuck. Be a good time. Come on, buddy. I'm waiting for an answer. You're just going to say the exact same thing again? Come on, buddy. I'm waiting. Yes or no, bud? Come on. I'm waiting. Come on. Was he banned already? What the fuck? Spamming it a third time? I don't know why they aren't showing... Oh, it's because I have I don't have live chat on. That's probably why. Okay, yeah, so this person's just gonna spam. Pussy! Comes in the chat to talk shit. Unwilling to talk about it like men. Damn. Conservatives truly are the most weak-willed you'll ever see. Very weak. Very sad. Very disappointing. Just a, a very weak will. All right, let's continue this. Social conservatism within the Republican Party um, is a real passion of mine. I'm very pro-family. I'm very pro-life. Uh, my whole motto is I just like to win and save babies. So that's what I do. Win and save awesome. babies. Uh, Blair, go ahead and tell us where you lean politically. Yeah, every political quiz I've ever taken matches center right so that's me i don't have sort of the popular story everyone loves of like i'm a former liberal i'm a lifelong republican always voted that way and yeah that's me i'm definitely a little bit less socially conservative and uh that's where i live that is true by the way obviously compared to somebody like that lauren lauren lady laura lauren i don't know the, the blonde clone right um, compared to her, Blair White is absolutely on the more progressive side socially. Okay, I don't think that's like a debatable thing. John, go ahead. It's a pretty clear copy paste uh, between Lauren and myself. I think. Oh yeah, apparently Blair White also lied about her um, about her uh, score on the Political Compass. Um, somebody got a screenshot where she posted it or like showed it on a video. She actually um, apparently, at least this is what I saw. Um, people got the link from her uh, Google and actually found her real results. She was actually more left-leaning, and she edited it to show her as more center-right. Blair White actually lied about her political opinion, so much so that she went into the fucking data. Like, you know how you can, like, go into, like, the metadata of, um, of like, what's it called? Whenever you, uh, the source code. She went to the source code of the page and changed the properties to make it look like she was more conservative. Wait, I checked it too. She didn't change link variables. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the thing though, right? Because in the link they show the variables, but she, but it, so it showed the link, like it showed her actual score in the link, in, in like the link above, like whenever you here, um, when you take like that test up here, it shows the variables of your test on here, but they were different up here than they were on her page. She, in order to keep her grift up with her audience, changed her score using the fucking, like, editor. Xander Hall, in Vosh's video, you can watch her exit out of the Google search for center-right political compass. Wait, really? That's funny. She only changed the image in editing. The variables showed the real result. She changed it in editing. I thought she changed it in, like, the um, source code thing. Okay. Neat. Yeah, but Blair White does lie to her audience about her political opinion. She is more left-leaning than she lets on. That does not excuse anything that she says or does. I think fiscally populist and uh, social. Jesus, Doyle, you are quiet. Carlin, are you different than them? Yeah, I'm a little bit different in that, um, I, you know, some people say I'm a former liberal. I'm actually a current liberal. I have never stopped being a liberal, even though I did leave the Democratic Party. Um, I Politically, on my political compass test, I tend to be right in the center, and I frankly just want common... <laughs> 
Imagine thinking that, like, appearing in the center of the political compass is anything to brag about. Also, she's lying here. I watched her debate with Shu on head. She basically admits just hating poor people. Carolyn Borisenko hates poor people. Just, like, she despises poor people, okay? She is a full-on pull-yourself-up-by-your-bootstraps pull your type person. Though I do think she is on the more progressive side socially. And sense people to come up with common sense solutions. Awesome. So as we get into this, I want to let you know something important. This is a, the first question we're going to jump into, which is, what is the future of the right wing, right? If we're going to win a war, if we're going to fight the left, we've got to figure out- All right, we're not going to watch too much more of this because it's fairly irrelevant to the point I want to make, but it's the, uh, it's the comments that I'm really concerned about and that I really want to hammer in on because, oh boy, oh boy. Does it, does it feel bad for Blair, okay? Let's just watch. Who's on our side? And there's a split of trying to figure out if the future of the right is a conservative, moral, Christian party that is a strong nationalist background, or if it's this big tent party full of liberals, libertarians, disaffected liberals. left, etc. Before we jump into that, I wanna give a huge shout out to our sponsor for today. Guys, the world is getting crazy, and I'm telling you, it is not- Please fuck off. Please fuck off. Is this a sponsor? Okay, here, the sponsor's over here. Big tent party of libertarians, the disaffected left, conservatives, etc. Like with the questions, we'll try to go in the same order. We'll start with Lauren. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm really confused why this is a discussion about the future of the right when we have a liberal, actually, she's a Democrat, with one good opinion. Uh, we also have a transgender on here. Uh, you know, I don't a really think we should be giving a platform uh, to this kind of degeneracy, which is a uh, gateway drug to pedophilia. You know, I absolutely disagree. You know, we were the party. Not a flinch on Blair's face as she gets called a degenerate and a gateway drug to pedophilia. Not a flinch on Blair White's face. How much do you have to have cucked yourself to have sold your soul in exchange for a right-wing grift for profit to subject yourself to this? How much do you have to, how, what crossroads did Blair White drive out to where she summoned a demon, a fucking demon to sell her soul? That's, that has to have been what happened. To not even flinch at being called this. To not even flinch at this woman's fucking bile that she is spewing right now. Of traditional marriage. We were the party that opposed gay marriage. We've always been that party. We've always been the party of family. We won handedly. In 2016, without the LGBTQ vote, we started losing when we started compromising. So I'm really curious why. She's objectively wrong, by the way. One of the biggest things that, and I, I'm going to talk about this a lot later in my final segment of this stream, by the way. Um, I would actually argue one of the biggest wins for the right is when they moved away from like the TradCon, um, you know, Glenn Beck sort of uh, rhetoric and optics and moved more towards the... Um, the like classical liberal grift days, like the anti-SJW community, that was in the right, had the most success. When they started accepting people like Milo Annapolis, people like Blair White, people like, um, uh, uh, what's a, uh, Candace Owens. These people, despite being parts of groups that conservatives hate, black people, gay people, trans people, and so on, they were actually able to pretty up the optics of the right, especially to young people. I know Milo's not gay anymore. We'll get into that later. Don't worry. Um, but at least back in like the 2016 Gamergate days, right, when the anti-SJW community was monolithic, this was the peak of conservative optics, okay? This is when conservatism was doing the best. This woman, whether she realizes it or not, is harming the Republican Party, and conservatism in general. If you want to get the young, hippin' and hoppin' Zoomers into the, um, into the, uh, obviously Milo is still gay. You can't cure gay. It's not how it works, right? Um, but he claims not be gay. He's, you know what I mean? Um, it, like, she's destroying her, she's not acting in the best interest of her political movement, right? If you want to get the hippin' and hoppin' and Zoomers into conservatism, you gotta make it look cool. And believe it or not, People like can't well, Candace Owens is more boomer bait, right? But Blair White and Milo Annapolis made conservatism look cool to Zoomers, okay? And guess who they're also really good at bringing in? A lot of young LGBT people and people of color. 
I actually feel like the online left and online leftist uh, creators, and I'm going to start orienting my content in this direction a lot in the future, have not have have done a disservice to another demographic that are also very susceptible to being pulled in by far right propaganda. We focus a lot on the straight white male gamer boys when it comes to the people that get pulled into the alt right, and that's mostly the group that gets pulled into this stuff. But they're not the only group that gets pulled in. There are a lot of young POC and a lot of young LGBT people that get deluded and then thinking that the Republican Party will accept them and get pulled into that kind of shit. It's true. And I actually, I actually don't think that enough online leftist content creators talk about this enough. I don't think Destiny talks about it enough. I don't think Vosh talks about it enough. I don't think Demon Mama talks about it enough. I don't think any left. I mean, I haven't seen enough of them, uh, enough from them talking about this kind of subject and no, but I actually, like, in my personal opinion, I haven't seen them do that much. And, and there are trans people, a lot of young trans people that get pulled to the right by Blair White, believing that the right will be accepting of their identity. When in reality, when, like, for example, a trans person joins these far right spaces, they are subjected to the most toxic, transphobic environment you can imagine. But at that point, they feel like they're already too far in. There's no going back. How do you think... Have you ever seen the LGBT board on 4chan? Sorry, my leg was itchy. Have you ever seen the LGBT uh, board on 4chan? There are trans people on 4chan ripping each other apart. Calling each other... There was a term that I learned recently from ContraPoints. I was watching one of her streams and she was talking about it and she told me what it meant because I'm a mod in her chat because I'm, uh, uh, ContraPoints likes me. Uh, you know, I just got to brag about that a little. Um, called HUN, H-O-N. And apparently it's like a, a, a pseudo slur, I guess. Slang, a slur, I'm not exactly sure. For a trans woman who doesn't pass well, and I promise you that term is thrown around by conservative or far-right trans women, mostly trans women, who, and it is used incorrectly a lot, a lot of the 4chan trans people, 4, 4chan, 4 trans, um, you know, a lot of the trans people on 4chan call ContraPoints a hun. It's H-O-N, not H-U-N, H-O-N. ContraPoints. I'm sorry, but if ContraPoints doesn't pass, I... Uh, I don't know what fucking does, okay? Yeah, th these people don't know what this word means, right? So fucking obviously, right? But my argument still stands. There are LGBT people, people of color, who are also susceptible to the alt-right rabbit hole and can even get pulled to the point of being Nazis. It's possible. There are trans Nazis. There are black Nazis. And they were radicalized just like any 15-year-old white boy. White gamer boy. And we need to talk about that as well. And this woman, whether she realizes it or not, and hey, I'm not complaining, though I'm going to make fun of her for it, is actually advocating against this party's best interest. If the Republican Party's optics were what this woman is spewing right now, the Republican Party and conservatism online would die. The hippin' and hoppin' Zoomers would not be jumping on the conservative train like they did back in 2014 to 2017, okay? The anti-SGW, like, craze did a really good job of masking, like, of, of making the optics of the right look way better. This one would take it back to the days of, like, it, she would take it back to 2005 when all of countercultural culture and, like, the young people hated conservatisms. Uh, conservatisms? Hated conservatism and hated Republicans. That was a pretty off-topic rant, but I feel like it's worth saying. Uh, people who are libertarians. I mean, you have a party of freaks who love the free market that you can join, but don't come into our party and try to influence it because that is how we are Wait, losing. Wait, is she against the free market? And in market? case you haven't noticed, we are losing. Uh, you know, they are- I guess Nazis are anti-free market. That is true. And she is a Nazi, by the way. Now advocating for chemical castrations for children. We're spotlighting transgenderism at CPAC. That's um, true. And I am a traditional Christian conservative. I believe in family. I believe that family is the foundation of everything that this country was founded on. And no, I do not believe that we should be compromising our values and spotlighting a lifestyle that is a gateway drug to pedophilia every single time. And you cannot deny it isn't because it's here. Blair, would you respond? 
Hey, do you know how I know um, that transgenderism isn't a gateway to pedophilia? Because every time there's a trans woman who's a pedophile, Blair White makes a video on them. It's always a trans woman. Every single time Blair White makes a video on them, and she's made like five. And some of those cases, I don't think there was actually ample evidence that that, that, that particular person was a pedophile, just that they like did something trans, kind of kinky, like dressed in some kink gear at a parade where there was a child present. Or so, like at a, at a gay right, a great gay pride parade where there was a child present. That's like, that's Blair White's. To give you an idea of like the tier list of like horrible opinions that we're at right now, Blair White is the kind of person who would make a video claiming that, trans, that, that a particular trans person is a pedophile because they went to a gay pride parade or like an LGBT, LGBT pride parade and wore kink gear there and someone brought their kid there so there was a kid within 10 feet of that trans person wearing kink gear at that parade so that makes them a pedophile. That's the kind of, that is the kind of content that Blair White would make. Um, so yeah. Trust me, if there was an epidemic of, uh, of trans people being pedophiles, I promise you, uh, Blair White would have made a video on every single one of them, and the fact that I can count on, on one hand how many times Blair White has made a video on them tells me there's probably not a huge deal with that. It's not a big thing that's happening. Also, trans women are way more likely to be sexually abused than to be, uh, to be the victims of sexual abuse than to be the perpetrators thereof. I think that there's a difference between you spoke sort of to gender ideology, which is definitely rampant on college campus. Okay. Blair White is not going to defend herself. I've seen this clip already. I saw it on Twitter. Blair White is going to cuck herself here. And this is the part that I that I really want all of you to see. It's not it's not really worth watching the rest of it unless you just want to see Blair White be like bombarded with transphobia for like an hour, which I'm not interested in. That's not something I'm Cool with however we are gonna watch her response here and see how she literally just doesn't fucking defend herself she doesn't defend her identity as a trans woman she doesn't defend being trans in general she literally just tries to say but i'm one of the good ones that is it this is definitely taking over culture i think that's different than just people who as individuals may technically be gay lesbian bisexual any of the above um, and I think that it's possible to fight against gender ideology with, while holding true that there are going to be people that are just different in life. I definitely am not here to speak to the future of social conservatism because that's just not my lane. But as far as the party, yes, it is. Um, I think that a big tent is most likely the future. I think that speaking, knowing my generation and a lot of people my age, which is mid 20s and, and Gen Z a little younger. I think that they voted for Trump the first and second time or just the second time um, because Trump kind of ushered the party into an era of a little more secularism. I want to remind all of you, this is her response to be call being called a degenerate, immoral pedophile. This is her response to that. She has been called a borderline pedophile, a degenerate, and a inherently immoral person, a freak even. She was called a freak as well. That this is her response to being called a immoral, degenerate, pedophile freak. That is more or less what she was called by that woman. This is her response. How how cucked? How cucked do you have to be? To ha like defend yourself, Blair. Defend yourself, please. Hey, do you want to know the transphobic idea that Blair White probably holds that's making her respond this way, in this, like, spineless manner? A lot of trans women, and it's mostly trans women, it's almost entirely trans women, feel like if they respond in an aggressive way towards transphobia, that it makes them seem like a man. A lot of trans women, and I'm not saying this is Blair White's case, but this is a case with a lot of trans women. Who here remembers the infamous... Uh, it's ma'am GameStop video. That video scared a lot of trans women on the internet. And I know this because I've talked to a lot of trans women who were, who were terrified by that video because it made, it made them think, it made them realize that if they respond in any marginally aggressive way to transphobia, it'll make them seem mannish and aggressive because men are aggressive, right? So if they respond in that way, then it'll make them come off as being like uh, 
like a man, right? It makes them seem less womanly, right? Which is a very transphobic idea, obviously. ContraPoints talked about it in her cringe video, though I don't know if she touched on this exact argument, but maybe she did. I don't remember enough. But I remember um, the first trans person, the first trans woman I ever, ever talked to in my life. Her name was Anna. I met her in Sea of Thieves. This is before I did politics. And we're just like sailing around the Sea of Thieves, and she was talking to me about being a trans woman, right? And she sent me that video, and now in hindsight, uh, Anna was probably more on like the, a bit closer to Blair White than to ContraPoints, politically speaking. She was a bit of a true scum. She wasn't big on non-binary people, but nonetheless, she did give some good insight on how a lot of trans women felt when they saw that video. How she felt like that that woman made trans people look really bad, and how she came off as very aggressive and mannish. Women aren't supposed to be aggressive. So I feel like that like mentality might be playing a part in Blair White's response here because she got angry and defended herself, as she should, against the vile that this like blonde woman is, is spitting at her. Then it may make her come off as being like manly or mannish or non-womanly, right? And I feel like that's a big problem. Um, I don't think he was overtly religious. I think... To an extent, he was a little performative with with religion and with prayer and things like that. Um, and I think that attracted a lot of new voters. And um, I'm not sure that, you know, going full force religious social conservatism is really the future. She's right, by the way. Like, Blair White's argument there uh, is correct. Like, if they go with the whole, like, ultra-fundamentalist, ultra uh, conservative shit, like, no Zoomers or young people are going to want to be in the Republican Party. Like, maybe people like John Doyle, who are, like, the, the, you know, like, the, um, like, the libertarian dude, the white libertarian dude that shows up to school in a suit back in high school, you know, who scrolls Reddit all day and watches Ben Shapiro videos on his phone at lunch, you know, that kind of dude. Like, obviously, that kind of Zoomer would still vote for Trump, but, like, if we're being completely honest, like, that is such a minority of young people the Republican Party and just conservatism in general would fucking die. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be completely honest with all of you right now. Most young people do not give a fuck about the merits, the arguments, or the morality behind a political movement. They care about the aesthetics and the optics, okay? It is optics and aesthetics that brings people in. It is why the right was so popular back in, in the anti-SJW days is because the anti-SJW community had fantastic optics compared to the left online because... You know what the left online had back in the Gamergate days? They had Christy Winters, Kevin Logan, kind of ContraPoints, though she wasn't, you know, she wasn't engaging in the, the presentation she does now, and she was much smaller. Like, I'm sorry, but the optics is what really brings people in, okay? And the, and the right just had it perfect back in the anti-SJW days. It fell apart, but still... That's what brought the young hippin' and hoppin' Zoomers in. But we've seen what we need to see. Like, Blair White obviously bar barely defending herself, not even not even raising her voice or even in any attempt trying to defend against the claims that she is a pedophile freak. I want you guys to guess what the comments on this video are like, because I bet you guys won't be able to guess. I was surprised when I look at the comments. Any guesses? Crip Chirp, you got it. I'm actually surprised. Defending Blair. Well, kind of. Criticizing her, but in a defensive way. <clears throat> Let's read these comments. It's embarrassing being a Christian and having Lauren be a representative of us. She is not a majority voice, and I'm actually surprised that she's not a troll by some of what she says. Lauren was obnoxious and rude just to be obnoxious and rude, especially to Blair. Terrible representation of Christ. Hilarious how women's sports are a butt of every conservative joke, but now they feign outrage over a couple of trans women getting involved in sports. Some inconsistencies here. This could be from a, like, a lefty person, though based on the fact that, like, I'd be surprised that was a top comment considering the fact that this has 7.2k likes to 900 dislikes, so that would be surprising. Holy shit, Lauren is without a doubt the most vile human being I've ever seen. True. I'm Catholic and she is hiding behind religion as an excuse to be so nasty. This is clearly conservative. 
I wish Blair had shown the same amount of respect that she was showing the others while they spoke. Lauren was especially irritating to listen to. I find it interesting that conservatives are so often against identity politics. See, Lauren kept insisting that the LGBT community is a package deal and leaving Blair to repeatedly defend herself and her beliefs. This is obviously from a progressive person. This is obviously like a pro comment. Blair really needs to realize that this is a, the conclusive result of the ideo ideology she propagates. I sincerely hope she comes to understand this. The amount of self-hatred she must feel to continue to identify as a conservative is insane, and attempting to shift people towards her current perspective will only cause her harm in the long run. This Lauren chick is actually insufferable. John and Blair are easily the most well-spoken and level-headed of the crew. A lot of these comments are from conservatives. Conservatives who are subs to this channel. And even they agree that Blair White should have fucking stood up for herself. This isn't like a, a like, this is not just like a, oh, lefties are saying Blair White should have still stood up for herself because she was, you know, having transphobia hurled at her. These are, I'm, obviously there were lefties in those comments, but like, there were conservatives there saying, I'm a Catholic. I, this is a embarrassment to Jesus Christ and so on. Conservatives there, people saying they like John Doyle and Blair. John Doyle's a Nazi. Okay, there were conservatives, regular viewers of this channel that literally says that uh, a degeneracy and immorality are taking over the Republican Party. You know, trans people, gay people, what have you, black people, maybe, depending on how far they want to go. Um, even conservatives are calling her out. I think that's the perfect I think that's the perfect title for this video, for this segment when I put it up on YouTube. Blair White cucks herself to transphobia so hard, even conservatives are disappointed in her. Blair, if by some, I know you don't watch any videos criticizing you, you've said it yourself, you don't watch videos criticizing you, but if by some chance, by the fucking, by some miracle, you actually end up watching this, can you, lefties have been telling you for a long time that the logical conclusion of the ideology that you push for is vehement, disgusting, hateful transphobia hate towards people like you, and you've denied it. You said, nah, 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 that's not true, that's not true, and now you're seeing it. You're being confronted with it, and you're clearly in denial. Or maybe you realize it, and you're just too scared to admit it because you built your entire audience in this whole conservative demagoguery. But it's here now, Blair. I'm sorry. The Republican Party and conservatives are going to start doing this to you a lot more once now that they've realized that you won't fight back. If you go on another debate panel show like this, someone who's more far right than you, someone who's more transphobic than you is going to continue to do things like this, calling you a pedophile, a freak, a, uh, a disgusting, immoral degenerate. It's going to keep happening. I'm sorry. You need to stand up for yourself, Blair. Realize that this is the conclusion of your ideology. And for the love of God, do something about it. Grow a fucking spine. You don't have to freak out on him on a, on a fucking podcast, but for God's sakes, grow a fucking spine. You can argue against transphobia without coming off like the It's Ma'am GameStop lady. But, Jesus. I've never thought that high of you, Blair White. And even I'm disappointed and surprised at your performance in this debate how bad it was, how embarrassing it was. I am actually disappointed in you, and that's saying something considering where my expectations for you were at the start of this. Seriously. Come on, Blair. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, uh, subscribe and ring the bell icon if you haven't already and you want to see more from me. Um, down in the description, you can find links to my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord server, which you should join. Fantastic community. Definitely a fun time. Uh, if you want to support me financially, you can also donate or sub on the website, xanderhall.com forward slash live. As you can see, we got a dono goal down there right now that, that fills up as people donate or sub. Um, you know, your monetary support is how I continue to do this for a living, and I really appreciate it. Um, anything that you're able to contribute, if you can afford to. Um, you can also uh, super chat or hit the join button on YouTube, become a member, and uh, support me through YouTube. And you can uh, sub to me on Patreon as well. There's a link in the description for that as well. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching, and have a good one.